Hello and welcome to part two of chapter one in our fire team series. In the first part, we looked at creating our characters. These characters, we set up the first person point of view and the third person point of view, so that we can see them on our screen as well as the clients on other screens can see us too. In this episode, we're gonna work on replicating the aim offset so I can see myself aiming up and down on other people's screens. But join us right now and head over and talk about how to make aim offsets. So as we mentioned last time, uh, when we push play, you see our characters turning with their yaw, but we can't see the pitch change. So if I aim up and down, the character on the other screen doesn't actually change at all. And it could be quite useful to know where a player is aiming, so you know whether or not to get out of the way or to return fire. So to do that, we need to add a aim offset to our third person character now. So let's go through that process. Now what you need here is an aim space animation. And it should look something like this where you've got a character doing this weird movement where they're looking up and down, left and right, and so forth. And ideally, if you are really lucky, you have an animation pack where it's already split apart. If you're using an animation starter pack though, this won't be the case. They will all be connected like this. But don't worry, it is pretty easy to get them all separated out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the play head at each 10th frame, so start at zero, so this is forward. And we're gonna go to create asset, create animation, and do can't pose animation and we're going to go into our animation start back add new animation aim offset folder and we're just going to click on there and name this one aim forward f and click ok and what you'll get is one frame of animation exported out like so okay. now we want to do this for each one we have so let's go back to our content browser open the aim space hip again this time we're going to the 10th frame and going to create an asset create animation can't pose this one will be in the same folder this one we call aim f u board up there we go another one frame animation there we're going to keep going through every 10th frame on here create asset create animation can't pose aim offset aim FD or down in time you'll have all of the animations done the asset you get the gist of it okay so we're going to fast forward past this bit and uh, meet you on the other side with them all separated out I'm going to be left so at the end of that, you should have nine animations for forward, forward down, forward up, left, left down, left up, right, right down, and right up. Now all of these are going to help us create our aim offset. So just go to add and import and choose animation. And in there you'll see aim offset. And you choose a skeleton you want to use. And this will be our UE4 skeleton that we're using for our mannequin and in starter pack. So click on this. And we'll just call it one um, aim offset. Okay, and we're going to here. Now, for an aim offset to work, these animations need to be additive. So if I drag them in right now, you'll see I get a little red dot, meaning it can't be added. So what I need to do is change all of them to be additive animations. Now, the easiest way of doing that is to select all of them. Then right click on one of them and go to Asset Actions and do Bulk Edit via Property Matrix. But in here, it allows us to change all of these at once. So just go to the right hand side and you choose additive settings change it from the additive to mesh space change it from skeleton reference pose to uh, selected animation scaled and the base pose animation where it says none you can click on the little squares that allow you to pick an asset and here we're going to use the idle rifle hip now what this do is going to add on these animations these aiming animations on top of this one so the difference between that uh, pose the idle pose and this pose is what's going to be added onto the animation so that are going on. So you need that sort of reference there. Once that's all done though, you just file save all and that's all done. Now if we go back to our aim offset, we can now drag this in freely place into our scene. There you go. So before I go ahead and place all of them in, I'm going to change my axes here. So better both say none, we're going to change that about. So go over to horizontal axis and vertical axis on the left here. And we're going to change the horizontal one here to be 
uh, your going from minus 90 to 90 and the vertical one is going to be pitch again going from minus 90 to 90 so the forward forward animation is going to be in the center here we then want to do forward down at the bottom here and forward up at the top and if you hold down shift you can move this green dot about and look down and you can see you get that nice blending between the different poses it's going to carry on doing the other one so left goes on the far left here left down left up and again we get that nice blend between all the poses right right down right up and there we have a nice blended aim offset I hit save on there and then go over to the blueprint so go over to where it says up here blueprint let's take it to the animation blueprint that's already been set up for us from the animation starter pack we're just going to add in now our aim offset instead so we need to go into our animation graph which looks like this at the moment and for now we're just going to drag in a cache of this locomotion we drag this in and do cache and new saved cache and i'm going to call this one ground locomotion and a cache basically will store like a copy of it um, that we can then use and duplicate as freely as we like so now to search for ground locomotion get me that cache to pose and then i'm going to feed that into an aim offset the aim offset i'll see down here drag it out it's the blue one base pose will be our ground locomotion and then your output of that will go into the output pose. and here you'll see our axes your and pitch being used we're going to promote both of these to variables your pitch to variable as well Okay, so now that's set up in there, we now want to get the values for your and pitch. Now we get those from looking at the controller uh, rotations as well as which way the actors are currently rotated. So let's go over to our event graph here. So normally when you see this being done, it is using the player controller and getting the control rotation from the player controller. However, we can't just do that because this animation is only going to be seen by the non-owner so we need to somehow get that value from the owner and then apply it to this non-owner based mesh so what we're going to do is need to get a reference to our player character and then use it to pass through an aim rotation to our animation blueprint so when we get the animation starter pack you're going to get this mess or jumble uh, we're going to clear out a lot of this make it a lot tidier for us to use so it's not a complete headache. So on blueprint of that animation, we're just going to get rid of this caster character for now. And in its place, we're going to use the try get porn owner to check if it's valid or not. So just check this out and do a valid check. It's pretty standard because sometimes this animation blueprint could spawn before the blueprint does uh, for the character. Therefore, you don't want to get an error. So if that is the case, we're then going to it uh, we're going to then do casting to our particular character so drag up from here and do cast to first person character and before we plug it in we're just going to promote that to a variable as first person character and then in between the is valid and the cast we're going to do a validation check for this as first person character so you do that by dragging out a get for the first person character right click on it and do convert to validated get We'll plug that into is valid and then this cast will go into is not valid so essentially what is happening here is we are checking to see if we actually have a valid reference to the player character if we don't yet we're going to go get one and then carry on the update animation is going to update every single frame so we want to make sure that we've got it at least once and don't do it over and over again and that's where this validation check comes in it stops it from doing it multiple times but there we go, we've got our reference set up like so. Now I can get rid of uh, this stuff here, and this stuff here, this stuff here. We can get rid of all this stuff too. Covered by this, that's fine. We can get rid of the jump if you like. Eat that. You can also get rid of, of appropriate uh, functions, you, um, variables you may have as well in the variable list. So we get rid of 
If we jump, jumping, crouching, don't get rid of all those. Okay, so it's cleaned up a little bit. Now that's going to make some errors appear in our animation graph. That's fine. We can go ahead and fix that. Go to our locomotion state machine. And in here you see idle to crouch. We're going to get rid of the crouch entirely. In this case, we're not going to have crouching in here. Delete it. And jumping we'll leave in there. But what I want to do is make sure uh, that this speed and and is not the case being done here. What I want to do is check to see if the player character is actually jumping. Um, so if you go as first person character here and from there to falling and plug that in there like so okay now you will get a warning uh if it could it's being seen as un uh, unsafe because it's a threaded update so what we can do is use a th difference is we could use a thread safe call instead of doing this and basically what it means is that we're going to take the is falling here cut that from there put an event graph and put it in here and I'm going to promote the is falling then to a variable called is falling and plug that in now it's valid check so now if I compile this it clears that warning and an idle jump now I can use is falling and put that in there and this will let go into that jump idle to jump the run jump It'd be the same sort of thing this dragon is falling and that should be okay, okay. right so on to the actual job at hand of getting the direction and speed back in there we'll make a function we'll do a function called um get movement details and we're going to do try get porn owner or we can actually just use the first person character reference either one okay but we need a porn reference no matter what and in here we can get the velocity now velocity is a combination of speed and direction so we're going to take this and get the vector length to get us our speed and set that to speed there we then are going to get direction from looking at the velocities and doing direction See, calculate direction and it's going to ask for base rotation this is simply just the actor rotation of our pawn so we can do actor rotation that in there that'll be our direction that in. compile this go back to our event graph and then drag in that function at the end there so that's now set up our movement details so we should get the same um, functionality that we had before we deleted a load of stuff on here so now we need to get the pitch and your so let's go and create a new function for this and we'll get aim details and in here we're going to actually record a, a link from our first one character at their aim rotation now for this we actually want to get hold of our first person character and get a variable from there that we want to use so let's go into our character class. Here. There. And we want a variable in here called the aim rotation. And this is simply just a rotator. Okay, there. And what we want to do is on the tick event is return this value back to the character. So we go to tick. And we want to do a check on here to make sure that we can actually put this. Uh, actually record this properly because we need to record from our control rotation only um, so what we need to do is drag from the event tick here and do switch as authority and then from that I want to get control rotation so with our get control rotation we now connect that up to our aim rotation here and that's going to be plugged into the authority node of our switch as authority which basically means the server gets control here. So the server is getting this information and storing this aim rotation on here. Which is important because this aim rotation is going to be a replicated variable. Let's go over to the right hand side, go to replication and change that to replicated. 
Okay, compile that. Now go back to our animation graph uh, blueprint. And in the aim details here, we can drag out our first person character and we get hold of that value there, aim rotation. So this is the rotation we want to be looking at. Um, we then want to make it so it is going to be using the also the actor's rotation as well. So we get the first one character and get actor rotation. This we're looking at a difference between the two essentially. So we need to know the difference between the two. Now the difference between two rotations is called a delta. So anytime you see the word delta, it just basically means difference. So A is going to be the aim rotation and B is going to be the actor rotation. And then we're going to do an R interp2. And this allows us to get a smooth, consistent change of values rather than a jumpy one. So this rotator we've got here, we're going to target. And the current rotation here will be a make rotator. And that's going to take in our pitch and your values that we've currently got down here. Your, and put it in pitch. We also need our delta time, and that's going to be pretty simple. It's just the get world delta seconds. That's basically the time between each frame of animation. And the interrupt speed is how smoothly and fast do you want this to change. So I'm going to put in like 5 for example, but you can tweak this to your own liking. Once we've got the output for that, we need to then split this back up to get our yaw and pitch separated. So we're going to right click and split this. Take the pitch out and do clamp angle uh, here and okay and we're going to put in the minimum angle of minus 90 and the maximum as 90 and do the exact same for the yaw as well and then we're going to set these to our pitch and yaw so we're going to get pitch and click this one and yaw is going to be connected to and that is all we need let's just hook this up to the beginning of our function and then go to our event graph and add that onto the end here. Hit aim detail. All that and save. So let's check this out. Let's go into our game. So as my character runs around, I can look up and see my character aim in the other window as well. I look down, you can see him look down there. Now if I do it the other way and switch over to this character. On this screen, I can look up. And I can look down. There we have it. And there we have it. We've got now our characters aiming correctly, replicated across multiple players. In the next episode, we're going to go over now shooting. So how to shoot and replicate that shooting from each player point of view as well. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We catch all my videos early from just $1 a month. I say a massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. And don't forget to check out Fire Team for free over now over on Steam right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop this time like the last time you better